Young musicians in Poland are reviving what they're calling the country's golden era, which was cut short by the Nazi invasion and Second World War. 1930s dances such as the foxtrot and tango are making a comeback as people of all ages flock to listen to a number of ensembles playing songs that died along with many of those who used to perform them. Once known as the Paris of the East, the Polish capital Warsaw is pulsating again as special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports for our arts and culture series, Canvas. In the courtyard of a trendy Warsaw bar, the small dance orchestra is starting to swing, as is its leader, Noam Zilberberg. It's an interesting time. It's the beginning of pop music. It's influenced by early jazz, but at the same time, all the musicians who were working at the time were classically trained musicians. So it's a very classical sound on one hand. On the other hand, it's this sound looking for itself, looking for its identity. Family identity is at the core of this revival. Zilberberg moved to Warsaw four years ago after studying conducting in Israel. His grandparents were Polish, but left before the Germans invaded. After their deaths, Zilberberg became curious about their past, and this led to a fascination with the pre-war music scene in Warsaw. We don't play so much concerts, we play for dancing, because we, we care about also preserving the original uh, meaning of this music. This was music for dancing. When we play, people enjoy, and this is the reaction that we get, and so we enjoy. It's just a lot of fun. We are honoring the musicians, the composers, the arrangers, band leaders, all, all of those people who were in, involved in creating this very unique scene in Warsaw in the 1930s. Many of the musicians who made Warsaw such a vibrant place in the 1930s were Jews. Some of them escaped the Holocaust, but others perished inside the Warsaw ghetto or in the death camps, and their music died with them. The scars of war are plain to see in Warsaw. The Germans flattened the city before retreating from the Soviet Red Army. Arches containing the tomb of the unknown soldier are all that remain of a fabulous palace. The Polish capital was stunning before the war, but the Germans systematically destroyed it in revenge for the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. This area, Warsaw Old Town, is anything but. It was meticulously reconstructed after the war. There's nothing left of the old Jewish quarter, just a pastiche of a neighborhood street in the Museum of the History of Polish Jews and an original recording of a song called Abdul Bey. And this is jazz band Milnarski Mazeski's version of Abdul Bey, a crazy Polish Jewish Palestinian foxtrot about a chieftain with four wives and a camel. <laughs> Maciej Maseski started learning the piano when he was three years old. He's a multi-talented classical and avant-garde pianist. Janemil Minarski trained as a drummer, but he also plays the banjo mandolin and sings. For us, there's a feeling, different feeling of something that was developing brutally cut, you know. The American jazz standards is like a classic, classical music in, in, in the States. For us, it was cut by the war and then covered by 50 years of communism. So we never had the chance to build a relationship with that epoch. And it seems to me that we're doing this now. My family comes from Warsaw. I heard stories about the old days. Warsaw scene were huge. It's a beautiful, very complex, Music. I always wanted to be one of these guys from the, you know, black and white photograph. This is a very important part of my life. Of course, I'm a traditionalist. I love to wear a uh, tuxedo and just 
be in that time. Just how important is history? History creates your identity. So for me, it's a way of discovering our national identity. I'm not trying to sound nationalist. It's not any better than any other, but it's just something that we've been denied for quite some time uh, as a nation. So it's kind of fascinating to discover that we had this huge thing going on that is kind of forgotten. We love this kind of music, and, and we love music from the 20s and 30s from every country, actually. But for us, it has added value of developing our classical reference, you know, our, our golden era. So it's kind of a building of some kind of legend, almost. It's very enjoyable, very powerful, um, sensual, you know. I really, really, really enjoy, yeah, enjoy dancing with my friends and I like the atmosphere and music and yeah, everything around. It's beautiful. It's the best thing I could do on a Saturday evening, basically. They're all young and, and they're basically playing music from the 40s, from the 30s, so that's a really nice approach to it, basically. I mean, nobody would expect a young orchestra to play such music, so it's ideal. I love it. It's really nice. This band is well versed in American swing, but they've had to unlearn that style to give this music its unique Polish accent, which heavily features the tango. The Polish tango is based on the Argentinian tango. It is a sexy dance, it is a passionate dance, but in a more central Eastern European manner. This means it's more polite. Despite trying to faithfully reproduce the sound of the 30s, Zilberberg says he's not turning back the clock. It's similar in the sense that people come to enjoy this music and dance together with this music. On the other hand, we live in a different world. It's not going to be the same and we don't want it to be the same. We just want to keep this music alive, you know? Just keep it alive. For the moment, they're certainly succeeding. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Warsaw.